Hey guys, how you doing? Joe here. Welcome to the channel. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. We're not out camping today. It's raining, but today we're going to take a look at the video gear I do use for camping. For filming my outdoor trips, for editing it when I'm home, for editing it in the field. Everything from batteries up to microphones, cameras, computers, tripods, everything in between. LG reached out, they wanted to sponsor a video, so thank you very much LG. Today we're going to be taking a little bit of a look at the Gram. This is what I've been using to edit my photos out in the field while I've been at the fort, fishing, just kind of hanging around. This little tiny laptop is very lightweight, hence the name the Gram, and it makes it very easy to slide into my backpack and edit photos and video on the go. So what I like about the LG Gram, it has a 17 inch big screen. Another really good feature for me because I'm using it out in the woods is it has a 19 and a half hour of battery time. Super lightweight. It's got an 8th generation Intel Core i7 processor. Comes with Windows 10 Home. 16 gigs of RAM. 512 gigabyte solid state drive. And I like the fact that the borders are very small. The screen's almost the full size. What I mainly have been using this for the past few times is for editing my thumbnail photo out in the woods. I use Adobe Lightroom. I'll take a few snaps of a certain spot that I think would make a, for a good thumbnail and then I'll mess around with it right there, out there in the field, make sure it works and then I have the thumbnail ready for when I'm ready to post after the hours and hours of editing it takes me. So, we've got my LG Gram covered. Thank you LG for sponsoring the video. Appreciate it. Let's move on to the cameras I use. So right now I'm using my brand new Nikon Z6, Z6, I got corrected, one of the two. It's a mirrorless, it's new from Nikon, it's pretty decent. I've had a couple issues with it. The main thing that I don't like about it is the fact that it doesn't have a flip out screen. It has like a flip up screen, screen, and I know why they do it. They do it for durability, right? So it's supposed to be more rugged that way, so it doesn't uh, have a chance for things to get into it or for it to break off, whatever. But for me personally, and from the cameras I've used in the past, I really appreciate a flip out articulating screen. I'm alone in the woods, you know what I mean? I'm filming by myself. And obviously you can do it without, but it takes a lot of setting up, double checking and making sure. And then sometimes my head getting cut off, um, off the uh, screen. This is my old Nikon. This is a Nikon D5500. I've, I've made most of my YouTube videos with this camera. This is an entry level Nikon. It has a flip out screen as well, articulating. Pretty decent camera. Crappy, crappy, crappy autofocus. Garbage autofocus. Complete trash. That's why all my old stuff is all manual focused, uh, which isn't a bad thing. It just takes a lot longer. Um, this ADD, this is a Canon ADD, has good autofocus. Um, it's bulky, it's heavy, it's a DSLR, where as opposed to that being a mirrorless, um, probably double the size, double the weight. A decent camera, good autofocus. Uh, I learned a lot more on this Canon, but I've come back to Nikon, as you can tell. Um, I have a kit lens for my Canon. I'll bring this when I do. This is my, like, my backup camera. I'll bring this sometimes for two camera option. I'll sometimes bring this one. This one's much lighter weight. But for my Canon ADD, I have a kit lens of 18 to 135 here, which works fine. But I've been using my 15 to 85. It's a little bit nicer of a lens uh, for the Canon. For the Nikon Z6, because it's a, it's a mirrorless, because it's a brand new uh, camera, Nikon did something and they came up with a Z series lens, which is nice. It's what's on right now. It's what I'm recording on now. It's got an F, F4 as the bottom um, f-stop, and then it goes up from there, which is okay. But what they had to do is make an adapter. So you can use, they didn't have to, but they did. So you can use old lenses on it. This is a prime uh, AFS Nikkor 85 mil. So it's a Nikon mil, or sorry, Nikon lens. But that comes off, and this is the adapter that goes on the, on the lens of the Nikon. And you can use older lenses with it, which is a help. The only problem is this is a pretty noisy lens, so I have to shoot on manual or I have to dub over the the the, the motor noise with music or whatever. I can use it. I use it a lot for thumbnails. Again, taking thumbnails with this uh, LG Gram, I use it because it's very crisp. I can get it down to f 1.8, 
the back is blurred out, complete bokeh, uh, but again, it's a touch noisy. I do tend to bring this, and I also tend to bring my Nikon kit lens. This is an old kit lens. This is the lens that I came, came with this one. I used to use this for all my stuff. And this, this actually got dumped. No, this one got dumped in the Great Slave Lake, the, uh, the Canon 80D with the kit lens. That's part of the reason I switched out to the other lens because it started acting all funky. But this is an 18, or sorry, 18 to 140, very similar to the Canon kit lens. I prefer Nikon's glass. I prefer the warm, warm feel, the, the color, the texture of Nikon glass way more than Canon. I do agree that Canon has a, or had a superior autofocus. But for me, Nikon is where it's at. I'm just, I'm a fan, fanboy of Nikon. Uh, I like to stay true to it. Um, my old Nikon, D5500, sometimes I'll bring my 35mm lens with it. This is another prime, you can get down to 1.8 and it's a crisp lens. This is good for B-roll or again for thumbnails because the autofocus is trash, but it's very crisp. So, those are my cameras, my main cameras. I'm pretty happy with the Nikon other than the fact that it doesn't have the flip-out screen, which I can negate by using my monitor. But I'll only use this monitor in places that I'm bringing, like the LG Gram, like the Ford, somewhere around here. I'm not going to take it on a canoe trip. Uh, I'm, I'm going to either use a different camera or, or risk it with just the non-flip-out there. The good thing about it, on my canoe trips, I normally have extra time or I have someone with me to kind of help go along with it. I can either check back on it or, or have them look at it if I'm in frame or not. So this just plugs right into the shoe and I can see myself completely fine in the monitor. This is an Elvid monitor. I got it off Amazon. It's not the greatest if I'm being honest. I don't tend to use it too much. Um, tripods. Right now I have a Cameron tripod, a small one, and that's what I'm using. And it's, it doesn't have like, a, it has a ball head, it doesn't have a handle. You just move the camera by itself on the ball head. I use that tripod because it's small and it's lightweight. When that tripod is too big, I use this one. This is a piece of garbage tripod from like Best Buy or something along those lines. It's all plastic. Next Tech is the brand. It's just trash. And I broke probably five of them. But it's probably half the weight and size of that one. So when I'm on canoe trips or backpacking trips, when weight is an issue, I'll bring this, especially backpacking trips. This can actually go in the, in the top of my bag, boom, right like this. I don't have to mess around. If I bring a backpacking backpack, I can probably slide it down the, in the side. But the problem with this is there's no ball. It is the handle. And in order to adjust for, for uneven ground, because when you're outside, the ground's uneven, I can't just correct the ball head. I have to either bring one of these legs up, you know what I mean? That's what I have to do, bring one of the legs up or bring a leg down if it's, if it's all set up. So, garbage. And I've broken a bunch and I don't want to re rely on them, but when weight is an issue, this is what I go with. Try, uh, sorry, microphones. Microphones are a huge deal. I, I get, the most criticism I get is that my, my volume is, is trash. It's all over, my audio is all over the place. And I always get asked the question, Joe, why don't you use an external mic? Joe, why don't you use a lav mic? I'll tell you, I do use an external mic. I use, I have one, two, three, these are all road, not, not cheap, not garbage, not trash. And then I have a fourth one on the camera itself. The problem is with a lav mic, I'm moving around, a lav mic you wear, it's a wireless lav mic, they're like pretty expensive, but I'm moving around all the time and all you would hear is a against my shirt when chopping wood doing anything all you would hear is just against my shirt and it would not be good so that's out of the question again also you have to wear a battery pack with or with wear them with a battery pack and, and run a line up it's just I move around too much okay if I was doing something like this stationary sure it's not the case not for old Joe so what I have had for the longest time is the video Rode video mic pro and this is supposed to be the top of the line. It's like 250 bucks, and it works fine. But I can never get the settings right. It has settings on the back, and it runs on its own batteries. So that can be a good thing and a bad thing. 
running on its own batteries is good because you don't have to eat into the battery of the camera, but it's also not good because if you don't have an extra 9 volt or it runs out or whatever, if you don't notice, you're running with no volume. And that's not good. So on it is a, is a dead cat. This is for wind, wind protection. Comes like that. This is the only one of these I've had. I use it for a while. I always get this like echoey noise in the background. I cannot figure out why I don't like it the, that much, to be honest with you. I don't like things I have to mess around with too much. So I don't really use this, this mic anymore. It's like a $250 mic. Like I said, I don't even use it. Um, what I do use the most is the Video Mic Go. What the problem with these are, I've broken four of these. The screw comes out of the middle where it holds on. I've super glued it, I've taped it, everything. In the cold, they just shatter. This, this, um, this housing just shatters. Also, where it comes in and out, I've had issues with. I know Sean has had issues with that as well. Again, this is my fourth one. Other than the fact that it breaks a lot, I really do enjoy the way it works. I like it. It runs off of the battery of the camera. And I've never had, and I like the sound out of it. I get a good sound. It's just it breaks so many times. This is literally my fourth one that's on the camera now. Video mic go. This is my video micro. M I C R O. Video micro. Very small. This also works good. And I'll show you a little trick here. Use this forever without knowing this, and watch a little video on YouTube the other day and figured it all out. So look at that. Bouncy, bouncy, fun, 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 fun. It's not good, right? Bouncing all over the place. You just take the cord and you tuck it in one of these little grooves in the mic, uh, uh, hot shoe. And it's way, it's still bouncing, but it's not smashing off the camera. So that's on, that's off. You can see the difference. Wax on, wax off. Anyways, this is a good um, microphone. Uh, I, I just prefer the sound over the mic go much better. So again, this runs on the battery of the camera too. Excuse me. I do use a lot of GoPro and GoPro accessories, propane and propane paraphernalia. So this is my GoPro Hero 4 or 5, one of the two, I think it's a 5. This is a pretty good camera. I like to put it on linear. So that's not fish-eyed, and I like to use it on 60 frames. It looks pretty nice. I got it. I get it on this clamp, and then I can put it anywhere I want. Like, the, the screw's not in there right now. It's in my headlamp one, but I can put it anywhere I want, on a tree branch, on my canoe. I can hold it, use it like this. These little beads work well. Again, the screw wasn't in the GoPro. Those little beads work well. Perfect for canoe tripping. Or if you don't like, uh, if you don't want to bring a small tripod, I have a small Joby pod with that I can use for this as well. But this, that's really only one use. You can only really put the Joby pod on the ground. They don't really wrap that well around uh, limbs unless the limbs are fat enough. This, you can stick it on a little tiny branch. You can set this on the ground, prop it under a log, put it on your backpack, put it on your canoe, whatever. I really like this. This is just a no-name brand from Amazon again. Um, another decent. One for uh, getting vistas and group shots with the, the good old selfie stick, you know? Can't go wrong with the selfie stick. Nice and lightweight, packs down nothing, works well. So batter, oh, also, one, one I also use a lot would be the chest mount and the head mount from GoPro. Do a lot of POV action, uh, works well for that. I have to carry a ton of batteries and chargers and memory cards and all that jazz. Let me show you all of my kit. This is my little Hidden Woodsman bag and I have a ton of accessories inside of it. Cords, everything. So, I do bring a little USB charger. It's in here in this bag. And I can charge my, my GoPro with it with my GoPro cords, right? I cannot charge my DSLR. I would have to get a, a Goal Zero with a, an, ad an adapter to charge my DSLR um, batteries. So instead of that, I just bring a ton. I've got for my old Nikon, I've got five here. This is for this one. If 
five batteries, and those batteries almost a hundred bucks a pop, right? A little charger for them in there. These are my Canon batteries. I've got my Nikon, my new Nikon batteries charging right now. I've got four of those. I've got base plates for tripods. You can never have enough. What if you bring your tripod and you didn't have your base plate on your camera? Then the whole trip is ruined because you can't use your stupid tripod. I've got um, sticky stuff for, for GoPros. Extra, go, extra little tiny tripods for GoPros for doing time lapses. Again, all the cords. Can't have enough cords. My light is a little light that sticks on the uh, on the top of the camera. Very small, lightweight. Not very bright, but it does it does a good job, especially when I do have a fire going. Again, just extra car uh, cords. This is a sh uh, a hot shoe mount, so I can put my light and my microphone on the camera at the same time. This one slides in. I got a little cage here that sometimes I use. You can put a, your camera in here, your microphone up here, you kind of just stabilize it, get good shots that way. Good old bag of memory cards. You can never have enough memory cards, man. Remember when I did that 10 day trip, I ran out. I had so many memory cards and I ran out. I had to go back and delete more uh, photos and videos off of it, which I didn't want to do. So extra, extra, extra memory cards. I always buy 64 gigs. There's no point in buying a small memory card anymore. Tons of 64 gig. In my Nikon, I'll show you, I have a humongous SD card. It's not even called an SD card. I'll show it to you. It's, it's 15 times the size of these other ones. I don't like it. I don't like it because it, I only have one and there's only one spot, a spot for one on the camera and sometimes it messes up. Sometimes it says it can't read it, which is not good. It's 120 gigs. It's a Sony. I'll show you, show you in a minute here. I also got some filters. I have a neutral density filter and I have a polarized filter. Polarized filter is good for like blue sky. Neutral, neutral densities look good for like warm, warm feeling. Um, yeah, that might be it guys. So we went through my, my editing stuff, the LG Gram, I bring out and edit there. Went through my main cameras, backup cameras, GoPros, accessories, batteries, microphones, chargers, cords. I actually have to use this for my, um, oops, no, not that one. This for my camera, my Nikon, to plug into my, my, my uh, LG Gram because there's no adapter for the um, SD card thing that I have in the, in, the, in, the, in the Nikon. I don't know what it's called. Anyways, I have to plug the camera right into the, to the computer, which I'm not a huge fan of, but it, it has completely to do with there not being a, an adapter for that type of uh, memory card. For, I haven't been able to find one for anything, but that's okay. I'll just bring this, and then, um, yeah, it works fine. This just goes in my and my cord case as well. Okay, well, I think that covers it all. You guys have seen me shoot video in the outdoors for over 10 years. My stuff is constantly evolving. I started with a little flip camcorder that, and I didn't know how to edit. I would just do one takes and I didn't have a tripod. I would stick it up on a piece of wood and do a, and do a video in one take, five minutes in one take. That's why all my first videos were all music over crazy action but as I've come along and, and learned and, and per, not perfected but grown with my craft I, I've, I've learned what I like what I don't like what I like to do what I don't like to do and um, yeah this is the culmination of all of that right now so I use not maybe not necessarily all of this at the same time but throughout different types of videos and throughout the year I use all this in the field um, again, the LG Gram was new to me. I've only had it for about two weeks, but I've been able to go out and use it and been happy with it. So, if there's any questions uh, on any editing gear, oh, for, for video editing, I use a um, Cyberlink Power Director. I need to get on the Adobe, the light, or sorry, the, uh, the one that everyone uses, but it's hard for me because I'm constantly getting videos, constantly putting them out, so I don't really have time to learn a new editing software. But, um, yeah, anyways, onward and upward, if anyone has any ideas or questions or comments about any of the video editing camera, video or, or photography editing stuff or cameras, 
stuff I've talked about, ideas that I could possibly use in the future, maybe a different idea for a monitor, please let me know in the comments. So, have a good day. We'll be back soon with a camping video, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.